Hi everybody, Kyle Austin here with Matt Wenzel at uh, the destruction after uh, Michigan <laughs> State's loss at um, at Ohio State. Uh, 48 to three final. If you didn't tune in for the ending, um, here with our three big takeaways. Um, Matt, I think number one, you look at everything that went wrong today. To me, the yeah. root of so much was how mismatched they were at both sides of the line of scrimmage, just physically. I mean, the, the push they were getting, mm-hmm. and, you know, the pressure on the worky, the fact that Michigan State couldn't run the ball. I mean, yeah. that just seemed to me to be what so much of the problems came from. Yeah, go to the first. I think. First First drive was probably their best Michigan State's best drive of the whole game, and they still got sacked what twice. Right. I mean, it was, became mm-hmm. pretty clear from the beginning. And, and pass pro had been actually what the offensive line had been best at this year, not today. Uh, <laughs> right. the, Ohio State's D line owned them up front, and then you go to the first drive for Ohio State and you know, move right down the field, and mm-hmm. I, I was almost all rushing. So yeah, it was pretty clear from from the very beginning that they were going to be dominant, that they were getting dominated up front, and. You know how that usually goes in football. Right. Um, uh, Nick Bosa for Ohio State. I mean, Michigan mm-hmm. State could not slow him down all day. He was chasing yep. guys around. Um, they couldn't get anything going. Um, and, and you're just not going to win football games. You can try all the different tricks no. in the book, um, but you just when you're that physically mm-hmm. dominated up front, it's not going to work. I heard somebody suggest that 2011 Alabama game was the last time it was that mismatched to look like up front, which is size and I think an inexperience. I mean, yeah. they, these young Michigan State – linemen on both sides of the ball just haven't faced guys of this caliber yeah. um, and that's what Brian Allen talked about you know next mm-hmm. time you look at it on a film they don't have guys in practice that are like Nick Bosa so <laughs> you know yeah. um, you know a, a poor freshman um, tackle out there I mean he just got to learn from that yeah. that's what they did today um, takeaway number two uh, Brian Lewerke a pretty big swing from probably his best career game last yep. week against Penn State to this um, it, it seemed like right from the start how much chase the round he get. It yep. just looked like last year to me. Um, you know, mm-hmm. he couldn't get comfortable. Yep. What did you kind of make of his performance? Uh, yeah, from the get-go, I mean, he, he was he was inaccurate the whole game. I don't think there's any questioning that. He only threw for 180 or 130 yards, whatever it was. Um, and, you know, he had admitted just a few minutes ago when we were talking to him that um, once, you know, that first drive, once he took a couple of sacks, it changed the clock in his head. You know, right. he starts thinking, i got to get the ball out sooner, i got to get it out now. And you start rushing it, and, well, that was the result today. It was, you know, one of his worst performances after back-to-back 400 yard games. There were, and that was apparent to me because there were times. Obviously, he had to run, but I remember yeah. a couple of plays where nobody was pressuring him yet, and he's still taking off yep. running. And it's like they, they very clearly got in his head yep. from the start. Um, I mean, obviously, he could have been better. I don't think it would have made that much of a difference. But yeah. it, it was just flashbacks to last year when he didn't get any protection, and he was just never comfortable. He's missing throws that we've seen him yep. make consistently. Um, and then we found out today why Mark D'Antonio has talked so much about having a run game because when your pass game's not running, you want that staple to go to. Yep. Um, and they didn't have that. Uh, takeaway number three, looking big picture. I mean, I, I guess the optimist would say that after everything that happened last year, we're still here at Ohio Stadium in mid-November talking about Michigan State having just played for essentially a spot in the Big Ten title game. Yep. Um, is that the positive? Is that more of a positive? Or is the negative the, the final score today, which mm, has been a sting for a while? Yeah. Kind of adding that it's it's somewhere in the middle. I mean, yeah. I think if you'd have told Michigan State fans or even the players that you'll be at Ohio State in, in November playing for – you know, with that on the line, they take it. You throw forty-eight to three on them. Eh, I don't know. That right. that's gonna hurt. Uh, you know, if you want to look positive, they have Maryland at home next week. Rutgers on the road to close the regular season. I mean, if you win both those games, it's nine and three. It should be a decent bowl game. I think going into the year, I mean, that would have been on the high end of most predictions, right. to say the least, uh, for how they would fare this year. Far higher than my prediction. <laughs> um, uh, Mark Antonio doesn't like this storyline, but Mm -hmm. I think they're playing with house money at this point. Um, Not that you ever want to lose um, Mm 48-3, get embarrassed like that. Um, That doesn't take this thing off probably today. But the point is that this Michigan State team has already shown it's moving in the right direction. Today, doesn't to me, doesn't take away, Mm -hmm. doesn't change the overall direction of this program. Yeah, um, they still had a. I mean, they still had a ways to go to catch yeah. up physically to Ohio State, and I think they'll get there with these young guys um, as they mature. But doesn't to me change the general direction, which is positive for this program. Mm-hmm. So they'll do it uh, here at Ohio Stadium. We'll have some more stories for you at mlive.com/spartans. Thanks for watching.